I will tell you the story of one of the most pressing challenges of our time. Plastics. A wonderful material. Light, cheap, flexible, versatile. But then when we are done with this, just waste. My story with waste started a long time ago. My entire life, I heard this one sentence. If you keep it, you have it. You never know when you might need something. So I was a bit of a hoarder. I ended up collecting a lot of things that I could use, but I actually never did. It was just waste. So I asked myself, what happens to all this stuff? At my bachelor project, I designed a reverse vending machine for diverse fractions of waste so it could be separated and collected and sent to recycling. Soon after, I was working with environmental education at my hometown, back in Brazil, in the department responsible for cleaning the creeks and the drainage systems of the city, part of the municipality. My job there was to educate low-income communities to stop putting waste in nature. During my master's in materials engineering, I had the opportunity to learn a bit more about plastics and its properties as a material. So after my PhD, I decided to start a company, together with a few friends, to dig further into the problem of plastic pollution. And how could we design something that could actually help to recycle the plastics that were exposed in nature. Our journey started with questions like, OK, material is collected from the oceans and from the environment, and then what? What happens to all this stuff? Where does it go? And how can we create a sustainable solution for the material that is currently neglected, for the plastic waste that cannot be recycled? Today, I will tell you how these plastics actually can be recycled. So, plastics are a highly refined product from fossil fuels. 6% of global oil and gas production are dedicated for making new plastics. Every year, 350 million tons of plastics are produced. And from the past 70 years, Less than 10% of it was actually recycled. Only in 2016, 260 million tons of plastics were discarded. And from all this waste, 16% was managed to be collected and sent to recycling. 25% was sent into incineration. And more than 60% was either taken to landfills, to unmanaged dumps, or leaked into nature. And then what? So when you separate your waste at home and the municipality comes, collects it, they take it to a recycling center. In this facility, they will evaluate what is the material that they can or cannot recycle. In this type of facilities, at least 30 to 40% of all the plastic waste that comes in is immediately assessed as unrecyclable. And the reason for that is because material that is contaminated, mixed, or have low quality fall below the economic threshold for recycling process due to extensive pretreatment costs it might have. And then what? During the past few years, I've been talking to a lot of people in different sectors and industries. And one case that really interests me is the maritime sector. The maritime sector has to deal with both microplastics and marine litter. Lost fishing gears and plastic waste that are collected from the oceans during fishery activities are the classic example of materials that were exposed in the environment and are very hard to recycle. So they bring these materials to the harbors. And then what? 
All the material that is found to be unrecyclable is either taken to landfill or to incineration. Both ways are improper ways of disposing waste and constitute the end of life for this material. Landfill is a completely no-go in terms of environmental disposal. It creates uncountable health, environmental and social issues. Many countries have very strict regulations against landfills. Some countries are even considering banning it completely. In less developed regions, landfills are still an option. Or waste might be even simply burned on the side of the road. And then what? From the past five years, I've been living in Denmark. And Denmark is one of the countries with highest production of plastic waste per capita. Most of the waste in Denmark is sent to incineration. Only in the city of Copenhagen, 40,000 tons of plastics are incinerated every year, producing an estimated amount of 24,000 tons of CO2 emissions. And the material is still not being reintegrated into the system. Many studies highlight the environmental and social costs of incineration plants and the inefficiencies of waste to energy processes in comparison to recycling. $200 million could be earned every year if all the plastics in Denmark would be recycled. While incineration seems to solve the problem of space, where do we put all this waste that we generate? It also creates another problem, the ashes. Ashes from incineration are highly polluting and will most probably end up in a landfill. And then what? So today, recycled plastics are still worth less than new virgin products. And the reason for that is that Recycled plastics have some restrictions in its application due to possible contamination and because the material loses quality every time they go through a process. Technical challenges and economic barriers prevent mixed and contaminated plastics of being recycled at all. But it doesn't need to be like that. What we forget is that plastics are fundamentally oil and gas. The building blocks for making plastics come from crude oil, a fossil resource, and there is a multi-billion dollar industry behind it. So, even the material that is contaminated, degraded, and could not be recycled, could be seen as a valuable resource if we could reprocess it into new valuable petrochemicals, right? At Blue Menu, my startup company, we are working on the concept of a modular unit, of a machine that is able to reverse engineer plastic machine. We are inspired by nature, and the process is very similar to what nature does by converting organic matter into petroleum over millions of years. But now, we can do this process in just a couple of hours because we can control this process. The machine works like a pressure cooker. High pressure, high temperature will break down the material into the molecular level and will allow us to recover the building blocks for new virgin petrochemicals with high quality, even for food or medical applications and the, without the use of fossil fuels. The modularity of the system allows it to be implemented everywhere. Imagine a pop-up factory, container size, in the backyard of your company or anywhere in the world. The modularity allows decentralized implementations and is very useful for communities with lower income and regions with very difficult access and to locations where this type of technology is absolutely needed. What we want with this is to create social impact 
from recirculating what waste that was previously just polluting the environment. Financing is one of the most challenging aspects for all the emerging technologies in the waste sector. And this is because investors, especially in the early stages of this type of projects, have to put quite a bit of money. They are very expensive projects. And they might not have the return of investment as fast as they could if they would invest in other sectors, which is understandable. But if you think about it, what is 10, 20, even 40 years of return of investment compared to hundreds of years the that this material is exposing the environment, polluting? What will return of investment even matter when we are sick and our planet can no longer hold all this? So, we can only call ourselves committed to creating a real change if we prioritize impact rather than return of investment. With this project, we believe in the infinite circularity of plastics. And we see waste as a valuable resource that can be reintegrated in our society and can create socioeconomic impact. And here we talk about circular and regenerative economies that can recuperate our natural environment and can create change in people's life. That is plenty of plastics to go around for everybody working in this field. So the best thing that we can do is to become partners, is to collaborate. Our first prototype was developed through collaboration, international collaboration, and we couldn't have been otherwise. We need industrial partners that are able to see the big picture. And they are committed to come together with startups, industries, universities, governments, in order to deal with this challenge that is to really minimize environmental impact and the depletion of natural resources and to deal in a mature way with the problems of, an, of our industrial society. So the big prize that we gain by becoming a circular society is life. And for contributing to this, not everybody needs to become an entrepreneur like I am. But everybody can do something, even if it's very little. By volunteering, by connecting people, by supporting causes and initiatives that are working with environmental actions, and especially by sharing your expertise in whatever professional field you master. We are looking for recycling the unrecyclable, to close the loop for the plastic materials, to do what is currently not done, to create environmental and socioeconomic impact from waste. And I'm here inviting you to be part of it. Come, join us.